Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace that you have given me. I can never repay you from my life to say that I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Savior, Jesus, Jesus, for the grace that you have give, given me. I can never repay you from my Allah to say that I Thank you, Lord, I give you glory, 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 glory to the Lamb. Yes, I give you glory. Glory, 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 glory to the Lamb. For you are glorious, you are worthy to be praised, you are the Lamb. Upon the throne, oh, and you share me in righteousness forever. You are the Lamb upon the throne. The Lamb, the Lamb, the Lamb, you are the Lamb. Upon God's throne, oh, you are the Lamb. Upon God's throne. Good morning, good afternoon, wonderful women of God. The Lord bless us real good in Jesus' name. Thank God for today that the Lord has made. Today is the twentieth day in the month of September year 2018 his mercy has kept you and i alive and the lord has preserved us by his grace and by his mercy so we give him praise we give him honor i want to thank you everybody that connected at this moment and those who will still connect later and especially those of us who have been making it the point of duty to be here every other week i want to appreciate god for our lives thank you so much for your support for sharing the video for sending it out, for inviting other people. I want to appreciate God for your lives. And I trust that the Lord Almighty is going to bless us this afternoon in the mighty mm -hmm. name of Jesus. I also thank God for our daddies who are also connected, especially my husband, week after week, you know, encouraging us on this program and being here with us. Uh, bless the name of God for your life. I thank God for the privilege he has given unto me, not because I'm the best, not because I know he does, but it's a privilege that he has given unto me to be able to do this for him. And I do not take it for granted. I give him glory. I give him honor and adoration. Everybody that is joining and commenting, God bless us. We're good in Jesus' name. If you know any woman of God on your page, please kindly share this video. Invite them to be part of what the Lord is doing. And because the Lord has something in mind for us this afternoon and uh, is going to uh i'll send his word to us i do not have any word of my own but i depend on god i i depend on him and i trust in him that he's going to send out his word you know like never before in the mighty name of jesus and this afternoon i trust the lord almighty that he will he will grant us insight into his word in the mighty name of jesus i want to appreciate 
The Lord Almighty, once again, for this privilege, for this opportunity, will bless his holy name. Why don't we, we just praise the name of Jesus for some few minutes? Let's just exalt his holy name. Let's just praise his name. Here's the continuation of the program last week. Good afternoon, everybody joining. The Lord bless us real good in Jesus' name. God bless you, all the women of God that are commenting and are coming online. And even if I did not mention your name, please pardon me. We are all welcome online in the name of Jesus. Let's just magnify the name of the Lord. Let's just praise his holy name. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. He's a faithful father. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. Good morning, Sister Falake. Oh, Pastor Blin, the Lord bless us real good in Jesus' name. The great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. Mighty God, how great I am. Hallelujah. 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 You are the mighty God. You are the great I am. Atoba Jai Eleruni. You are the mighty God. Mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, there is none holy as a God. Yeah. There is none beside thee. Neither is there is no other like our God. There is no holy as the Lord, and I'm saying that you are good, and all the miracles you've done has brought me joy. For now I'm changed, and all the hopes I have are blessing you right now. Oh. Father, I declare that I love you. I declare my everlasting love for you. Yes, Savior, I declare that I love you. I declare my everlasting love. For you, Father, I adore all you, I adore you. I let my life be for you. Ah, how, how much I love of you, Savior, Savior. I adore how oh, you my king, my God. I let my life be for oh, you. Oh, 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 how much I love of you and I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord. I, I lift my body, I lift my body to worship you, oh my soul, my soul, my soul, rejoice, rejoice. 
No me without you, Lord. And so, Lord, I'm depending on you. I am relying on you. There's no me without you, Lord. I cannot do it without your power, Lord. No me without you, Lord. Take over, take charge. No me without you, Lord. Lord, you are my backup. You are my dad, God. You are the one I rely on. You are the one I depend on, Lord. I say, there's no me. Without you, Lord, no me without you, Lord. There's no me without you, Lord. No me without you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I bless you this afternoon, this morning, this evening, as the case may be in all the nations of the heart that my beloved women of God and the men of God that have joined us today are watching. Father, we worship your name and I praise your name. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the privilege to be alive. Thank you for the privilege to serve you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to do this for you. Thank you for the grace for consistency. Lord, over the past 10 weeks that we have been doing this, Lord, your grace and your strength, Lord, has been there for me. Thank you, Lord, for the revelation of your word. Thank you for inspiration of your word. Thank you for illumination of your word. And this afternoon, Lord, I cry unto you and I say, Father, I have no word of my own. I have no thing to say, but I depend on your spirit. And the Lord, your spirit of our Lord will give me inspiration, insight, even into your word this afternoon, this hour, this moment. And Lord, together, as all those women of God are connected all over the world, the Lord Almighty, your word will speak, your word will minister to our hearts in Jesus' name. Daddy, I pray that your word will come to me first and foremost. And Lord, through me, Lord. Your word, oh God, Lord, you will send it out, oh God, Lord, to all your ministers who are watching and those who will watch later in the name of Jesus. Let your name, oh Lord, be glorified this afternoon for a good internet connection. Once again, Lord, I depend on you. Let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless us real good in Jesus' name. You're all welcome online. The Lord bless us real good from everywhere we are watching. And um, please, if you can just do me a favor today, I have never asked for this before, but I just want to have an idea of the different countries where we are watching. If you can just put there, you know, tell us where you're watching from so that I know where we are watching. I know that videos go all over. So I just have an idea and just to praise God in the name of, you know, to appreciate him for the way he's spreading the message. So you can just say, oh, I'm watching from so, so, so place so that we get to know the country where you are watching from hallelujah last week i started a series so uh, i started a topic oh, i don't know whether it's going to be a series because i'm just taking it one uh, one step at a time you know as the lord is putting it in my heart on the on, on the on the appointed time for manifestation that was what i talked about last week Thursday, by the grace of god and uh, i want to bless god you know for utterance and for testimonies that follow that administration thank you everybody that called and you know to speak with me and those who send me messages and for those who did not even call but you prayed for me i appreciate you real good in jesus name yes i can see people from canada oh pastor kemi pastor kishola god bless you ma from nigeria the lord bless you real good oh man of god oh we have our, our daddies in the house watching oh oh and woman of god from belgium from u.s from Malaga, Spain. Oh, praise God from Spain, Musia, Spain. The Lord bless us real good in Jesus' name. And um, I told us last week, we started with reading the scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. And we talk about the appointed time, that the appointed time is a set time. I'm, I'm, I'm going back a little 
because of those who were not connected last week and have not had the opportunity to watch the video, you can watch the videos on my page and I'm downloading them now as well. I'm putting them on our YouTube channel where we put messages over commerce television for past edition. I think today should be about the 10 weeks that we have started this. We started July 9 and every Thursday we come online, you know, and uh, between 12.32 or start two to close by four. So, and I talked about the appointed time is the set time, you know, the due time, the expected time. And I gave us an illustration that when a woman, oh, God bless you, Sister Amy, from Spain, yeah, yeah. And I gave us an illustration that when a woman is pregnant, you know, and that the day you became pregnant, you might not know that you are pregnant that day, but you know, after some weeks, you know, maybe a few weeks, depending on your body, because we are talking to women in ministry, I know our daddies are watching as well. You begin to notice changes in you or you feel sick and then you go to the hospital and then in the hospital you do some things and then they tell you to come back at usually between 10, between 10 and 12 to By the 12 to week of pregnancy, right from the day of your last message, they calculate it and they tell you that by that 12 to week, they are going to do an echography to determine the due time. That is the time that you are going to put to bed, the exact time that you are, that is the due date. And whenever they give that due date, they always say that it can be a plus or minus two weeks, you know? So it can be earlier, it can be uh, a little bit earlier. That, that is, if it is earlier than two weeks, it's still okay. But if it is, you know, uh, later than two weeks, it's still okay. Anything earlier than two weeks, or, you know, or later than that appointed two weeks, is termed as a premature baby, which means, you know, Normally, they count that 40 weeks is the week that the baby is supposed to stay in the womb. And, you know, in actual time, it is nine months we count because there are two weeks from your last lessons to the other time that the conception takes place. So anything that comes before that time, you know, before at least 38 weeks of pregnancy is termed as, you know, pretend pregnancy. You understand me? That is a pregnancy that did not wait until the expected time, into the appointed time, until the time that it is expected, you know, to come forth. And when the pregnancy comes, you know, uh, before that time, because that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. When the pregnancy comes before, you know, when the baby is born before the expected time, there are dangers, you know, associated with it. And also, so I'm going to take that, I use that as an illustration, you know, to, to you know, to bring us into the ministerial, you know, uh, aspect, which we want to talk about. And I'm going to be talking about the danger of manifesting before the appointed time, which means, you know, in other words, the danger of giving back before the due time, you understand me? Or the danger of forcing the baby to come out. Like somebody told me she was pregnant and um, they had already given her a due date that she's going to give birth to the baby. And because of one reason or the other, she began to agitate. She said, oh, I'm going to go to them since they said it is CS. Maybe they can remove the baby before time. And I told her, I said, you don't do things like this. When your baby is not in danger, when it is not that the baby is in danger or the condition is no longer conducive, you understand me? Why do you want to bring out the baby before the expected time, before the due, you know, the due time? So also, in ministry, when you launch out before the appointed time, there are dangers that are associated with it. There are problems that are associated with it. There are things that are associated with it. Some people have died today. Some people have gone on I'm not despising anybody just because, you know, of starting out, you know, of, of manifesting before the appointed time. And the Bible makes us to understand in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I don't want to read that because that's not my text for today, from verse 1 to 10, that, you know, for everything there is a time and a season. So the time that you receive, you, that you conceive, is not the time, it's not the day you conceive that you will give birth. There is a process, there is a preparation time. You understand me? Even your baby, your body is prepared, you know, for that baby. You understand me? Then you have a whole month, you have several months to begin to arrange things and to put in, in things in place before the baby can come forth. So there is a, always a preparation time in between. And, you know, when we talked about the danger of manifesting before a time, it is because, you know, we, we talked about lack of being prepared, lack of preparedness. You are not prepared for the baby. You understand me? And, you know, they say, ah, you know, uh, in my language, they will say, ah, I you, my son. you understand me? It's not a strange visitor. You've been pregnant. Even if you did not know for three, four months that you are pregnant. In some women, they don't even know three, four months that they are pregnant. But at least you have months to prepare. 
You know, it's just like when the baby is about to be born and there's no food, there's nothing, you didn't buy anything, nothing. Thank God for those of us who are living in the Western world here and speaking life from Saragossa, Spain. You understand me? At least if you go to the hospital, you don't even have anything. They will give you initial clothes. But you understand me? But you can't take those clothes away from the hospital. It belongs to the hospital. Once you are going home, you must go and get your own thing. You must be prepared before manifesto. Before bringing forth that baby, you must be prepared. So therefore, if you now bring forth the baby before the appointed time, that is, if you launch out, you begin to manifest or you force yourself to manifest before time, there is a danger, you know, attached to it. And today I'm going to be taking my text from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 2. Hallelujah. Please, we can share the video to other men and women of God who can be blessed by this. Exodus chapter 2, you know, and I'm going to read quickly from verse 11 to 15. I will first read in King James Version here before I take other versions. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their bodies and he spy an Egyptian smitten an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there were no man, he slew the Egyptians and hid him in the sound. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Whereas, wherefore smittest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a priest and a judge of ours? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now, <laughs> when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. He dwelt in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, For everything there is a time and a season under heaven. And Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 to 3, Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3 also says, you know, that, you know, write the vision down, make it plain upon the, you know, upon the tablet, that those, you know, who have written it to work it is said, for the vision is for an appointed time. Though it tarry, it will surely come to pass. So whatever the Lord has shown unto us, there is an appointed time. And so today we're going to be talking about what are the dangers associated, you know, what are the dangers that, you know, of manifesting before appointed time. We've explained last week that appointed time is the set time. And I've explained earlier today that appointed time is the due date, the due time for everything. The Bible says there is a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plan, and a time to reap. So there is a time to receive a vision from the Lord. There is a time to be prepared. And there is a time of manifestation. Hallelujah. So everything has a time and a season, you know, that after, you know, that God has appointed for you. The, you know, I wrote down here, I said everything in life, everything in life has an appointed time. And God is a God of order. You understand me? He does not do things, you know, you know disorderly. The Bible says, let everything be done orderly and decently. So our God is an example. He has already shown us an example of orderliness. How do I know that he's an, he's an orderly God? In the book of Genesis chapter 1. The book of Genesis chapter 1. Hallelujah. Sorry about that. In the book of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 from verse, from verse 3. The Bible says, the Bible says, and the earth was without form. Okay, I read from verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. The heaven and the earth. Before it could go forth, there has to be a separation. Separated the heaven, separated the earth. And separated light. Why he works one after the other. You understand me? And after he created light, then he created the day, you know, and the time. He created the firmament in the heaven. He was doing everything one after the other. You understand me? It was after God created everything and put everything in place. That was when he now created man and woman. He made sure that everything is in place. Now, supposing it was man that God created first, as the whole place was in darkness, how do you think man would have survived? Or man said, no, 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 I want to come out now. This is the right time, you understand me? But God knows the time that, you know, that is right for you to, you know, to show forth so that you can shine well, so that you can shine, you know, long, and you shall, can shine forever. 
So therefore, it is important for all to understand this timing and that we should not jump before time. You understand me? Everything that man needed to live, to survive, to be alive was already in place before God created man. So therefore, man was able to operate, you know, in, you know, under this mood. You understand me? Because everything was in place. So God is a God of order. You understand me? So, and he, make, he, he created everything one after the other so that there will be ease of manifestation. He arranged everything so that, you know, when you are manifesting, when you are showing forth his glory, yeah, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people to show forth the glory of God. But for us to begin to show forth his glory, you know, understand me, and to last long the way the Lord wants us to last, there are things, you know, that the Lord needs to put in place. So it is very important for us to allow God to finish his work before we come forth. Now we read the book of um, uh, the book of Exodus, and we read about this our man of God, uh, you know, our man of God Moses. You know, the Bible makes us to understand that he, 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 that verse eleven. Before that verse eleven, let me just give us a little background story about Moses. Moses was born at a time that Pharaoh commanded that all the male born by the Hebrew, that is the Israelite, you know, should be killed. Why? Because the children of Israel they were waxing strong. In the, from the land of Goshen, you know, after just, uh, Joseph took his family, you know, the family, the family of Joseph came to join him in, um, in, in, in Egypt, and uh, the Pharaoh then, in, in Genesis, gave uh, Joseph a land for his people, and that was the land of Goshen. It was a land flowing with meat and honey, it was a good land, and they began to prosper, and when, the, when that Pharaoh died and J Joseph died and that generation died, he saw that they were increasing. And because they were increasing and they were becoming stronger and they were becoming stronger, he thought of what can we do? And you know, the people began to tell him and say, Pharaoh, ah, this Hebrew, this Israelite, they are becoming bigger, they are becoming stronger than us. You understand me? We have to do something. Otherwise, one day they will take over the land. Because of that insecurity, you know, Pharaoh had to command that all the children, all the children, especially male children, that were born should be killed. And thank God, you know, for the lineage of Moses. If you read Exodus chapter 2, Bible makes us to understand that a certain man of Levi, you know, Moses came from the family of priests. He was a Levite. He got married to a certain woman. And, you know, and the mother of Moses, when he discovered that he was pregnant with a boy child, you understand me? She began to imagine, she began to plan that this one, I will not allow them to, I will not allow him to be killed. I will not allow him to be killed. And do you know something? God prearranged Moses' birth. God knew he was coming at such a time because God had a plan to use Moses greatly as a deliverer. It was in the agenda of God that Moses, you know, would be a ruler, would be a priest, would be a leader of God's people. That Moses is the one that God is going to use to bring the children of Israel out of the land of bondage. And that was why the Lord gave that woman, you know, Jochebed, the mother of Moses, that wisdom. You know, another time I'm going to talk about it. I was at a conference last week and I was so blessed. And the woman of God told us, he said, do you know, do you know, do you know the act that Moses' mother built, you know, to protect, you know, uh, Moses? You know, Bible says after three months, she could no longer keep the baby. She had to put the baby in the heart and went to place her by the river. The kind of act that she built, it was the kind of act that could not, you know, that could not sink in the water. Do you understand me? It was the kind of act that could not sink in the water. The Bible says that the ark was floating in such a, you know, in such a way, you know, that the baby, the baby, the baby, you know, the water could not enter into the ark. The water also could not touch the baby. You understand me? What a wonderful woman. You know, another time maybe we'll talk about this great woman of God because she's a woman, she's a seed protector. I call her a seed protector. You know, she guided. And the woman of God told us last week, the mama God blessed that woman of God. She blessed us so much at the conference last weekend. And she said, we should go and find out what are the components that Moses' mother used in building that ark, you know, ark. And thank God, you know, the original mama came up the following day and told us that she did the assignment and found out that it was the same material that Noah used, you understand me, to build the ark. That was the same material that this woman used to breed, breed you know, to protect Moses. Why was she doing that? It was the Lord that gave her wisdom. Why? Because Moses had the call of God upon his life. The Lord has set him apart that he's going to be a ruler. The Lord has set him apart that he's going to be a leader. The Lord has set him apart that he's going to use it for that great assignment of delivering the children of Israel 
from the land of bondage, from the land of trouble, you know where they were. You understand me? And just like we read that scripture, that for everything, there is a purpose and there is a reason. You know, there is a season. So that the Lord has dropped that word, that the Lord has said it, that, oh, from your mother's womb, I have consecrated you. Yes, woman of God, do not doubt that you have that calling. I do not doubt that the Lord has separated you from your womb. I do not doubt your calling. Then who am I to even doubt your calling? You say, God, call you, so I leave you to the call. But before the actualization and the manifestation of this, of this calling, of this vision, there has to be a preparation. And so it is dangerous for you to begin to manifest before, you know, the appointed time. So every vision, every assignment, everything that the Lord has given unto us, ask it at appointed time. Ask an appointed time. There are things that the Lord wants us to do for time and per season. So it is very dangerous for us to set out to do things. So I was giving us a background because we're going to be talking about this man Moses today as we look about the danger of manifesting before appointed time. This man Moses, you know, it was in God's plan that Moses would be raised in the palace. Because God knew that that is the only place where that boy will be saved. Hallelujah. So therefore, the Lord gave the, the mother of Moses, that wisdom, to build that account to go and place her there. And as God will have it, she told the daughter, he said, if, the, if anybody comes and they are looking for this, this is it and everything, the sister of Moses, you know, the, the Miriam, she was there. She was the one watching the heart. So as Pharaoh's daughter came, you see, nothing happens by coincidence to children of God. There is nothing like coincidence for children of God. What happened is divine plan of God, divine agenda. You understand me? And if we can only wait, you understand me? Things will fall in line for us at the appointed. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, says, he makes all things beautiful in his own time. Which means when you manifest before time, things will be ugly. Hallelujah. When you manifest before time, things will be ugly. You understand me? You will struggle to do it on your own. You will struggle to function on your own. You'll be using your own strength. You'll be using your own capability, uh, uh, cap uh, you know, uh, your own power. And it is not the strength of God. It is not the grace of God. And let me tell you something. The Bible says those who we call, he justify, he glorify. When God calls, he back up. There is no failure in the things of God. It's not something that you will sit up and say, hey, if it does not work, I will pack it up. No, because it is God. And when you wait for the appointed time, there is no failure in the dictionary of God. Hallelujah. So Moses was there, was raised up. And as the Lord has preordained it, like I said, he has preordained it. He has preordained it that Pharaoh's daughter would come there because the only place that was safe in that place was Pharaoh's palace himself. Do you know how, do you see how the Lord worked? That is not, me, I don't believe in that is a coincidence. It was not a coincidence. It was a divine arrangement and divine plan of God. So maybe you have been looking at yourself and say, oh, why did I have to go through this in life and everything? Everything we go through in life is for a reason. It's for a purpose. It's part of the process. And that is why, you know, when I see people who are struggling, you know, to break the process and say, no, 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 I can't take it anymore. I can't stand it anymore. I just have to go out. After all, I'm also anointed. You understand me? I shake my head for them because you don't know that those things you are passing through is part of the process. Those women who are speaking against you is part of the process. So you must not Jump the process. You must not step out before time. Hallelujah. Even those who are criticizing you is part of the process. So far, whatever they are criticizing you for is, you know, is a lie. People must to talk. You understand me? It's part of those process. You understand? You don't need to call down fire before time. You understand me? You don't need to do that because there is a process. There is a thing that has to be done. And the Lord knew that the only place that is safe for Moses to stay was in the palace. You see how the Lord took the boy, you know, to go and stay securely in the house of his enemy. Just like the psalmist says, Psalm 23, he said, you prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He said, you know, that the Lord prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy, which means Joseph, uh, uh, Moses was there in the palace, in Pharaoh's palace. Pharaoh that wanted all the boys to die. Pharaoh that wanted everybody to die, to go. You understand me? Moses was there eating because the Bible makes us to understand that the daughter of Pharaoh, which was a princess, adopted Moses. If you have time, read that um, Exodus chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. Because I omitted that because I wanted to focus on 11 to 15. You understand me? He was eating in the palace. The Bible says, you know, he became Pharaoh's daughter's son. She adopted him and even gave him the name Moses. 
but it was Moses' mother that nursed him. What a privilege for this woman. In fact, the Bible says she paid her. That is, Pharaoh's daughter paid Moses' mother to take care of the son. It was part of divine agenda. And that woman must be special to God. I want to write something about that woman. Joke it, joke it she must be a very special woman to God. You understand me? She was even paid to take care of our own son. And I pray for every woman of God watching me this afternoon. Every one of us that has both spiritual and the physical womb. And even if, you, if your womb has not yet carried a physical baby, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that we shall eat the fruit of our labor. Our labor of our children shall not be in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will receive our reward here on earth and we will also receive it in heaven. What a wonderful reward this woman, you know, received. You understand me? You know, what a wonderful reward that she received. Hallelujah. She received the reward right from that place. You understand me? The queen was paying her, and the, um, um, the princess was paying her to take care of her own son. And what eventually happened to Moses? Moses became, you understand me, the prince of Egypt. Because a princess daughter is a prince. Hallelujah. You see how the Lord, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, he was, he, his father is 11. So he was born from the house of, you know, from, from, from the Levite family, let's say he was born, you know, into a pastor's home or into an evangelist's home or into a minister's home. And look at the way the Lord connected him to the throne. And that is why you refer to Moses today as a prince of Egypt. By adoption, the princess, the Pharaoh's daughter, adopted Moses. And he began to live there in the palace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. He began to live there in the palace. Amen. And so Moses was right there. In front of Pharaoh, he was eating. The Lord prepared a table before him, you know, in the presence of his enemy. Hallelujah. He was there eating, right there in the presence of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh could not do him any harm. You understand me? One of the benefits of, you know, of when you stay and you allow God to bring you out before the appoint, you know, at, at the appointed time, is that, you know, your enemy will just be looking at you like this. They won't be able to harm you. They will gossip and gossip and gossip about you. They will criticize tire. If I with the same man they have criticized you, they will still come back and be rectifying. Why? Because you did not bring yourself out. You did not send yourself on this assignment. If as they were they are criticizing you, they are talking against you, the Lord will continue to lift you up. If I the more they talk about you, the more the Lord is lifting you up. The more they become envious of you, the more the Lord is lifting you up. Why? Because it is not you. You didn't bring out yourself. The Lord brought you out at the appointed time. So therefore, Moses was there in the palace. The, 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 the Pharaoh could not do anything to him. You understand me? And during those times, during those times, during those times that Moses was there, do you know that the Bible makes us to understand? Let me read that scripture to us. Hallelujah. Because I read it this afternoon. You know, I read it this afternoon, and I, I really saw something there. In uh, Exodus chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, that is, uh, okay, let me read from verse 7. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may not nurse the child for thee? Pharaoh's daughter knew that, that their Moses was an Hebrew baby. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sarah. Our daddies that are joining and everybody commenting, God bless us real good in Jesus' name. Pastor Emanuel, sir. God bless you, sir. I saw Pastor Victor Lukoju. God bless you, sir. Thank you all for connecting and everybody that has been commenting commenting as well hallelujah god bless us real good in jesus name and to my lovely husband to god bless you sir amen so immediately pharaoh's daughter saw moses he knew she knew that did she said it she said it you know in verse 6 he said and when she opened the basket she saw the child and behold the baby wept and she had compassion on him and said this is one of the hebrews children she knew that her father had said that all the hebrew children all the male they should die. They should be killed. But the Bible says immediately she opened that ark. That ark that the Lord gave the mother inspiration to build. That ark that cannot sink. That ark of protection. That ark. May the Lord help us to build such a ark around our children's life. Because when we build such an ark with the, with the inspiration, with the back of the Holy Spirit, no power of the enemy will take our children. I said we will not use our children to do ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody, any that you and my and your own children, you know, to deal with and say, I shall be their dream ministry. I will see what will become of their children. The Lord will waste them away in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, because you are precious and honor. He said, I give men in exchange for your life. And even, you know, nations in exchange for you. So therefore, because we are serving the Lord, the Bible says that the seed of righteousness, they are peace. Our children are peaceful children. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever they go, because we are serving the Lord, they will meet with favor. Favor in the morning, favor in the afternoon, favor in the evening, in the name of Jesus. And for those of us who are in foreign land, our children shall rule in this land, in the mighty name of Jesus. Our children will not be doomed to misfortune. We will not use them for ministry. We will not use our whole life for ministry. We will not use our spouse for ministry. The Lord will preserve our seed in the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody born of man or born of woman that has made up their mind, that say, ah, shall be they are doing ministry. I will deal with them through their children. The Lord will waste such a way in the name of Jesus. It is scriptural. It says, because you are precious and honor, I will give men in exchange for your life. So therefore, anybody that is not getting our children for evil, the Lord will waste them away. Why? Because we are priests of the Lord. We are priests of the Lord. We are standing by his altar. And he has promised us that the seed of righteousness is peace. Our children shall be peace. This is not my message this afternoon. But I know the Lord wants me to say this. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say the protector. They are protected by the mighty hand of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. No weapon fashion against our children shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus. So Pharaoh's daughter saw it. She knew that Moses was an Hebrew boy. He knew that Moses was one of the children that was supposed to be destroyed because the father has given the instruction. But the Bible says when she opened it, she had compassion. This is a mother who had followed God's instruction. And where did you think she got that wisdom from to go and build an ark and keep Moses by the river? It was God's wisdom. Women of God, we need wisdom in ministry. In fact, it is wisdom not to manifest before your time. So when she saw the child, that was not where I was going, but I think the Lord just wanted me to say something about that. The Bible says that, and Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go on, and the maid went in verse 8 now. Exodus 2, 8, for those who are just joining us, and called the child mother. And Pharaoh's mother said unto the child, unto her, take the child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wage. And the woman took the child and nurse it. Now, eventually, Moses' mother had to take care of the child herself. You understand me? Women of God, nobody will take our place. I will be the mother of my children to hold it. Say that too to yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody will take our place in the name of Jesus. Because our home is the number one, even in ministry. Nobody will take our place in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says she lost the child. Now, she was not just nursing by giving him breast or giving him everything. The Bible says, make us understand that by the time he returned the child back, do you understand me? And the Moses' mother, you know, returning her back to, to Pharaoh's daughter. And Pharaoh's daughter now adopted the child. Now adopted the child, you understand me? Moses already knew that he was an Hebrew. How did you know? You will ask me, how did I know that Moses' mother, well, that Moses already knew that he was an Hebrew? Now look at it, Bible says in verse 11, Exodus chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, she was already grown, he was already grown. So Moses was prepared. You understand me now? He has been going through preparation. The mother has been telling him about the God of Hebrew, the God of the living God. The mother has revealed his identity to him. The mother has told him that though you are in the palace, you understand me, you are my original child. This is the living God. The mother had raised him in the way of the Lord. He went out onto his brethren and looked on their, on their body. The Bible says, onto his brethren. Who are the brethren? The Hebrew, the Israelites like him. He knew he was not an Egyptian, even though he was a prince of Egypt, because he became a daughter. Just like the way some, you know, when we come to foreign land and we take up, you know, a nationality of another country, you understand me? But in the real sense, this is not our country of birth. Hallelujah. You know, this is not our country of birth, but this is the place where, you know, you can take up nationality. So let's say that Moses has already taken up the nationality of the land. He has become not only an ordinary nationality now, he has become a special man in the land because he was a prince. You know, being raised by Pharaoh's daughter. Bible says when he went out, so he was prepared. He knew that there is an assignment for him. He knew there is something that the Lord wants to do for, you know, do through him. The Bible says, and he looked on their body. I'm reading Exodus chapter 2. I'm reading Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. You understand me? And he spied an Egyptian smitting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. You understand me? And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Now, when he saw the Egyptians treating the Hebrew, you understand me? That is the Egyptian treating the Israelites in a wrong way. You understand me? Something touched his heart. Why was his heart free? Because he knew who he was. That though he was living in the Pharaoh's house, though he was eating the food of Egypt, though he's been called the prince of Egypt, he knew that that is not where he belonged. 
He knew that his heart is with his people. He knew he had an understanding that God wants to use him. But he does not know how it is, you know. Look at the way the Lord preordained his journey. But the Bible says, now look at it now. You see, it was being prepared before. But the Bible says, he looked here and there. And he killed the teacher. What is that? Moses manifested before his appointed time. The Lord wanted him to be a deliverer of the people. But he had not even had the voice of God at that time. Though the mother has prepared him. He manifested before time. That was not what the Lord wanted him to do. You understand me? The number one danger of manifesting before time is that you will, you know, that you, you know, is that you will be using your power. You know, you'll be using the physical, you know, to operate in the spiritual. And it is very dangerous to do that. When you begin to use the physical thinking, the physical ways to run the things of the spirit, you know, it is a dangerous thing because the things of the spirit should be done in a spiritual way. You cannot fight a spiritual battle in a physical way. Bible says, though we live in the world, we are not carrying on the worldly world. So the assignment that God has given unto you, you cannot use your physical you know, power to do it. You can't use your physical strength to do it. You can't use your physical you know, thinking to do it. So, you know, before the Lord said, go and deliver the people, Moses jumped out. He jumped out. He began to think, what can I do? And he used the physical, you know, to, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to handle that situation. He struck the other guy down and he killed him and hid him in the ground. But was that the plan of God? Was that the time that the Lord wanted to bring it out? No, that was not. You cannot use the physical to operate in the spiritual. It is not done that way. It's not done that way. So the danger of manifesting before appointed time is that you'll be using, you'll be using your own knowledge, physical things, you know, and you know, to do the things of God. And when you do that, you understand me, you can't last. There are things, you know, it is dangerous. You can't last. Now, suppose in that day, the other Egyptians that are there, they surrounded Moses and they beat him and they killed him. Do you know what? That means that is the end of his assignment. Is it God that killed him now? You understand me? It was his lack of wisdom. Lack of patience that could not make him to wait until the time that the Lord will bring him out. That make him to go and be using physical hands, you know, to deal with people. You understand me? You cannot do ministry with your physical thought, with your physical mind. You can't do the work of God with your physical idea, you know, with your physical strength. You understand me? So you just have to wait for the time. So it is dangerous to launch out to begin to do the things of God with your own idea. God has not said, go and start that ministry. And you say, hey, <laughs> everybody, even people that are not up to work, they are already opening church and everything like that. Church is not a business that you just open here and here. Church is not a business that you are just open here and here. Now, I'm even talking to those whom God has called. You understand me? Because you see a lot of churches today, they just go and start up. I heard about one. They go and start up to church as if they are starting business. Church is not a business. It's not a business that you just start. Or you just say, ah, hey. Everybody, I'm in the choir. I've been singing there. Everybody say my voice is beautiful and everything like that. And then you begin to go and struggle. To get say, ah, ah, people are advising me. I should go and bring out my own album. Is it the appointed time? When, when you set out before the time that the Lord has appointed for you, you will go in your own strength and in your own power. And the Bible makes me to understand in Proverbs chapter 3, verse, you know, verse 5 to 6, say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. That you have the gift and you have the calling. That you have that, you know, you have that idea, you have that thinking that the Lord wants to use you. Does not mean it will start now. And that was why when I started to say, it is on the day, you understand me, that you get pregnant that you, put, that you bring for the baby. If the baby comes early, it is very dangerous. Do you understand me? Because the baby has to be kept in the hospital until the times that he mature. So one of the dangers of manifesting before the appointed time is immaturity. You begin to hurt immaturely. And that is what we see all around us today. And you know, you know, the, the, the Bible says when I was a child, I behaved like a child. I talk like a child. You understand me? A child is prone to so many things. You know what I mean? The Lord wants you to mature. The Lord wants you to be ready before he brings you out. Oh, I've been singing in the choir. Uh, the, uh, the choir leader knows that I have a beautiful voice, but they will not give me solo to sing. They will not give me this one to sing. They will not give me that one to sing. Do you understand me? And because of that, you now begin to say, ah, let me go and do my own album too. And it is not yet the time. You understand me? When it is not yet appointed time, you will struggle. And you begin to do, uh, you know, move around. The other day, somebody was talking to me. I said, ah, and I was trying to raise money for something. Then you are trying to raise money, then you begin to use flesh to do it. 
One of the dangers of manifesting before time is that you operate in the flesh. That was what our brother Moses did. You understand me? He operated in the flesh. He saw the an Egyptian beating an Hebrew boy. And because of that, he just killed the other one. I hid him in the ground. And do you know what happened the next day? Bible says he went out the second day. Exodus chapter 2, verse 13. When he went out the second day, the two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong. Where, where started thy fellow? And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? They question him. When you manifest before your appointed time, your calling will be questioned. Your manifestation will be questioned. Hallelujah. When you manifest before appointed time, your calling will be questioned. You understand me? Because you will have used immaturity to spoil the whole thing. And that was why even when he saw his brethren the next day, they were fighting. They told him, they said, ah, who has made you a leader? Yes, it's true. The Lord said he wants to use it, but is it the right time to launch out? Is it the right time? Is it the appointed time to go out? You are going out to carry the members of other churches. You carry the people that you know through the other people that are helping them. You understand me? You don't start off the work like that. The Bible says, wait for it. It will definitely come to pass. He said the vision is for an appointed time. The Lord wanted Moses to be a prince and a leader and a judge. That was what the Lord intended for him to do. But Moses went before that time. And do you know one thing? He paid the price for going, for going out, you know, when at the time that the Lord doesn't want him to go out. He paid the price for, you know, for jumping ahead of God. Woman of God, are you jumping? Are you going ahead of God today? So you have been in music ministry, you have been singing from church to church, and people are not telling you, you must, I don't know why I'm talking about music today. You must produce your album. You must produce your album. Now is the time and everything. Is it the time that the Lord wants you, or is it the time that the people want? Some people will say, the voice of the people is the voice of God. It's a lie. The voice of God is distinct and is different. If it is what to be the voice of the people, when Jehoshaphat was to go to war and to follow here at that time, Maybe all the prophet that gathered together, they were saying, go, go, go. Eventually, it was with me, Niaka, the true prophet that came and said, don't go. This is what the thing is. So don't just be speaking and saying the voice of the people. Who are the people? Where were they when God was calling you? Man, do not have the timetable of your life. So don't let any man push you. I am sure that one of the things that pushed Moses out was some of the things that the mother would have told him. That do you know that ah, we have been suffering in this place for too long and everything like that. Don't, don't allow sentiment to push you out before time. Do you understand me? If you might even have the time to do the album, and the money to do the album and the time, and the Lord will tell you that it is not yet time. You might have the grace, maybe because we are teaching two or three scriptures. You not think it is time to open a church. Woman of God, don't, don't set up before the time. I'm not doubting that God called you. If the Lord has called you, the vision is for an appointed time. Wait for it. It will surely come to pass. Everything has an appointed time. When you go out before time, when you set out before time, you understand me? Your vision will be questioned. The Bible says in verse 15, now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled. When you go out before time, you'll be fleeing. You'll be running when nobody is pursuing. You understand me? Powers of darkness will chase you. Powers of the people will chase you. Because you will be operating in error, here and there. You understand me? Error, here and there. You see so many people, you know, commit so many ministerial blunder and errors. And you begin to wonder, you need to wait for God to prepare you or to train you before setting out. You'll be flying out. Oh, God bless you, my own blood sister. God bless you, Mrs. Adelako. You are welcome online in Jesus' name. So when you don't wait for the appointed time, then you will be on the own. Moses ran. The prince himself, the Lord said, you know, place him in the, in the palace of Pharaoh. He was comfortable. But because he went out before the appointed time, he became a fugitive, a man that was running all over. Because the Bible says, most, you know, Pharaoh was looking to kill him. You know, the death he escaped as a baby, now came back. That is another danger. You understand me? When you, set, when you manifest before time, you expose yourself to death, both physical and spiritual death. Hallelujah. When you begin to promote yourself here and there and bring yourself out, is it time that the Lord wants to bring you out? You understand me? Is it time when a baby comes out, when a baby is born before the appointed time, they don't release the baby to go home yet. If you take the baby home at that time, that baby is prone to sickness, is prone to disease, and that baby can die. 
So when you set out, when you begin to manifest before appointed time, it can lead to loss of life and destiny. It can even lead, lead to the loss of the original calling. Woman of God, don't run when God has not asked you to run. Don't start when God has not asked you to start. Because when you set up before the appointed time, when you manifest before the appointed time, you have no backing from heaven. So therefore, when the enemies are rising here and there, where will you run to? Where will you go to? Don't let people push you. Don't let people push you to go and do things that it is not yet time to do it. Or the thing that the Lord has not even sent you to do at all. So you can teach two or three verses of the Bible. You understand me? Does that not qualify you to be a pastor? I always say it, you know, some of them are online. Some of these my wonderful pastor's daughter. I used to tell them, you know, mommy, pastors, all of them. And I tell them, I say, I thank God for your grace. I don't have the calling of a pastor. Me, I cannot be a pastor. Because it is not easy to pastor God's church. It is not easy to pastor God's people. So therefore, don't go out and set out when the Lord has not asked you to do it or when the time is not yet right. Today, we are talking about the expected time. So you have received that calling. The vision is for an appointed time. When the Lord came into the ministry, he told me, oh, overcome and drama and film ministry. That was the way we started. You understand me? Immediately, I wanted to produce a film in 1996. I struggled and struggled and struggled. Between 1996 and 1998, in fact, there was even one movie. I was talking about it last week. We completed the movie. We could not even produce it and bring it out. You understand me? One problem or the other will begin to come up. As a result of that, I was having issues with different people. Why? Because the appointed time has not come. But when the appointed time for me to bring out a movie, that was in 1996. So in 1998, the Lord told me, say, it is not yet time. Film production is not yet time. You go and do this and do this now, first and foremost. So that the Lord, as you have a call of God upon your life, does not automatically mean go and open a church. People do see us and say, ah, mama, you can teach very well. people you open churches. God has not come in to open it. Why should I go and open it? You understand me? That the fact that you can take the scripture does not want to tell me, go and open the church. Go and start with you. Maybe what God wants you to do first, you know, is a, you know, is to, you know, is to be teaching people. Maybe your fellowship in your house first. Not even with the intention of having a church or anything. But when you set up to go and open that church, when the Lord has not appointed you to open it, there are so many dangers in it. And today we say, uh, pastors are falling into sin. They are falling this way, they fall that way. You understand me? Because you are prone. When you go out, when you manifest before time, you are open to demonic attack. You are open to, you know, to demonic attack and to, you know, demonic inflation. I'm not saying that when you begin to manifest at the appointed time that the devil will be smiling at you. But at that particular time, you know that God is there backing you up. And that is why you can stand securely and, and quote that scripture and say, no weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper. Why? Because you are walking in line with God's agenda for your life. You are not going ahead of God. You are not going ahead of time. You are not running ahead of the people. You are not running ahead of God's agenda for your life. See, woman of God, listen to me. For every call of God, for every assignment that the Lord has laid on your heart, there is an appointed time. In 1998, the Lord spoke to me and said, no, it's not yet time for a movie. You know what I want you to do? First Nigerian secondary school. Go and just be staging drama for them. You understand me? Do you know why one of the reasons why people manifest before time today is because you want fame, you want credibility. And that's one of the things I talked about last, last week. Let God prepare you. You understand me? Don't go and expose yourself. When you become, you, can you say because uh, you want people to tell you congratulations, congratulations, then you go and bring out a seven month old baby and say because you want people to congratulate you now. My dear woman, you are going to kill that child that way because it's not yet time for the child to be born. Whatever you do before time can turn around to death, both physical and spiritual death. It can cause spiritual and physical death. Hallelujah. It can cause, God bless you, sisters. God bless you, everybody commenting. Please, if I don't mention your name, please uh, pardon me. Do you understand me? So when the time has not come for something and you go ahead to do that thing, it can turn around to death. It can lead to death. It can lead to trouble. It can lead to problems. You understand me today? So, so, some arrows that should not, that should not, would not have touched you on a normal day have penetrated some people's body today. Why? Because they went ahead of God. Because it is where the Lord says that you will back up. It is when you set out at the appointed time. That is when His power will back you up. And that is why you see people today, they say, God, call me, God, call me, and then they are facing so many problems in the work because some launch out at the time that God didn't want them to launch out. You understand me? And because they don't, they don't want to be, you know, they don't want people to slap at them and everything like that, then you see children of God, ministers, going to the devil to look for power. 
Eh, we are come and pray. You understand me? Come and pray. We have so many, so many, so many, uh, so many modernized babalawo these days. We have so many modernized habalis who are standing on the altar. You understand me? And they will bring it special oil, special water. They will come and pour it on your on your altar too. They won't tell you anything before that anything will happen. Then the people, the crowd will begin to come. I say thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy. How people are coming now? They are coming and they are coming. As they are coming, you don't know what they are attracting into your church. Witches will come in there. Wizards will come in there. Strange women will come in there. For some men, they will begin to go after the pastors. They just realize that they begin to have strange urge. And women need to talk to us. Women, women of God. Your God has called your husband. You know it. He has a calling. You have a calling. Give him time. Ask, you know, if you say, want to launch out, let's go and pray. Father, is it the time for us to launch out? Don't push your husband to go and start what God has not asked him to start. Don't push your husband out to go and start something. You understand me? When it is not yet time. Some men don't even have the calling. It is the women that have the calling. But because they want to, they want the man to front. They say, hey, go and just go and tell them. And this one appeared to you. That one appeared to you. And you see, you see people, you know, you know, arranging lives and decorating lives. You understand me? I'm not saying they have no call. Maybe you have the call. Maybe he has the call. But maybe it is not yet time for manifestation. Maybe it is not yet time for manifestation. People that should serve as assistant pastors or that you should still be there teaching Sunday school because you say, I don't want people to come. It's not time. After all, what am I does pastor have that I don't have? Me too, I can do it. My dear sister, is it your time yet? You will shine when you will shine long. You will shine forever. Only when you manifest at your appointed time. And then they will not begin to pour special oil on the altar and bring people. Then the man that is a gentleman himself that is not doing anything before begin to have strange appetite for strange women who begin to sleep around. Anything is scared. Even inside the church, there will be fornicate, you know, will be committing adultery with, with women in the church. And the woman, the woman too, will be saying, eh, 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 I don't know why my husband is behaving this way. Why would he behave that way? Is he ready for that office as the Lord multiply it? I'm not saying that temptation and challenges will not come, even when it is appointed time. But when it is appointed time that you launch out at the right time, then you can be sure of God's backing. You can be sure of God, you know, holding you and sustaining you. Hallelujah. Is the Lord speaking to someone this afternoon? Is the Lord speaking to someone this morning? So it is dangerous for you to launch out to begin to manifest. Because when you launch out before the appointed time, it is not God that is manifesting in you. It is self that is manifesting. It is self that is manifesting. You understand? Some people say, ha, after all, how old is that woman of God? See all the things that God is doing through her. Even me now. It's time for me now to bring out my whole album. Me too, I must write my home book now. It's now time for me to begin to, have, you know, to, to hold my home women program. As the Lord sent you, is it the right time? Is it the right time? See, as we are in life, we are not all born on the same day. Even for those of us who are born on the same day, we are born at different timing. And the Lord has different agenda for each and every one of us. So it is dangerous for you to set out to manifest before the appointed time. Because those whom the Lord calls, you know, he justifies and glorifies. When you begin to go and do what the Lord has not asked you to do, you understand me, at the particular time, there is problem. There will be problem. Some will say, yeah, I want to begin to go around now. Other women of God are going around. They are traveling to countries too. Then you begin to arrange, arrange yourself. Even where they did not invite you. You begin to arrange yourself. You want to go. You want to go. A woman of God was talking to me two days ago. He said there was a time she wanted to go because people are always inviting her for a program. And the only time she has program, they will come too. So she wanted to begin to go. Out. And the Lord said, don't go. It's not your time. Don't go. It's not your time. Don't go. It's not your time. You know, she said, the time she begin to wonder, what is it? When will it be time? Because the Lord knows the time. The Bible says, he makes all things beautiful. Ecclesiastes 3, 11. All things beautiful in his own time. Don't jump ahead of God. Don't go before time. Don't run ahead of God. Don't begin to force things to happen. When you manifest before time, you begin to force things to happen. I was struggling between 1996 and 1998. I wanted to produce a movie. Ask me. Women of God asked me, I said, so where are those movies? They didn't come out. They didn't see the light of the day. Why? Because it was a year time. It was a year time for it. The Lord told me, go back to secondary school outreaches. So I started traveling from one Nigeria state to another. Teaching drama. But was the vision not there? Right from the day the Lord came into the ministry, he told me of a commerce film production. The vision was there, but it was not yet time for film production. 
So for every vision that the Lord has given unto you, for every assignment, everything has a timing. There is a due day. There is a due time. Women of God, don't force it. If the Lord is not making it to happen, don't make it happen for yourself. I, I use one phrase very well, and I say it, and I say, Lord, you are the one that made things to happen for me. I don't make things to happen for myself. Why? Because I know that if I make things to happen for myself, it can, it can, it can harm me that way. Do you understand me? You can go strong, you manage. I have, I have done it before. I've tried to do it before. And the Lord told me, daughter, that is not the way to last in ministry. When you go out before time, you can be cut short. So you want to travel. You want to go for administration and everything like that. It's just like one of our movies that we shot. You understand me? And the lady wanted to go. The Lord wanted her to be singing in the choir and the church. But she, because they will be giving her honorarium. You understand me? And giving her money. He said, after all, she has the call of God upon her life. I'm not saying you do not have the call, but is it the time to go out yet? When the, when, when Nema, you know, the captain of the host of, you know, uh, uh, of Syria came to Elisha in the book of Second King, and he was sick, he wanted to be healed. And after he received his healing, the Bible says he brought gifts. He brought everything, you understand me, you know, to, 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 to Elisha to say thank you to him. Elisha did not even come out. He just sent the word to him. He said, no, he doesn't want the gift. Why? You know, because it was not yet time. How do I know that it was not yet time? In ministry, there is an appointed time for everything. For every assignment of God, for every move of God, for the next level, for the next thing to do, there is an, always an appointed time. When it is not yet the appointed time and you do it before time, you understand me? It can lead to disgrace. And like I said, it can lead to death. You begin to hurt him actually. You begin to lose your strength. The ministry is not something you have you 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 you, you can do with your own strength. Bible says by strength shall no man prevail because it's a it's a work of God. You can't make it happen. By the time you are making things to happen for yourself, you are bribing people, you are buying them gifts so that they can invite you to program. Woman of God, you don't need that. When your appointed time comes, when the real time comes, you understand me. It is the Bible says the gift of a man and a woman will make way for him. It is your gift and God that will open the door. You don't need to give anybody anything. And that is why I pity people who, who paid their way, who bribed their way to be ordained. Do you understand? Is it time for you to be exposed to all those things? Has God made you? Is it the appointed time? You know? And in that second Kings, second Kings, let me quickly read it to her. You know, because that scripture, I didn't write it down, but it came to me. As I'm talking here, you understand me? Second Kings chapter 5. Second Kings chapter 5. You know? Uh, Verse 20, the Bible says, But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has feared Naaman this Syrian. He, he looked to receive him at his hand, that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take what some out of him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to, to, chariot to meet him and said, It's all where? And he said, All is where? My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now, there he come to me from Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of prophets. You see, Lyso, because it is not your time. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garment. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he heard him and bound two talents of silver and two bars with two changes of garment and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go and they departed. Hallelujah. But when, but he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said to him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no wither. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money? This is where I'm going. In ministry, there is a time for everything. God bless you, um, Sister Faith. You are welcome online, man. There is a time for everything in ministry. He said, Is it a time to receive money? To receive garments and olive yards and vineyard and sheep and horses and men servants and maid servants, the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, and unto thy seed forever. And he went forth from the presence of in, from his presence a leper as white as his, as snow. You see, there was the, a couple of weeks ago I was thinking about the difference, you know, between Elisha and Gehazi. Don't forget that Elisha was also a servant of Elijah. And Gehazi is not the servant of Elisha. So at one time or the other, both of them have been in the place of servants, serving men of God. Do you understand me? They have been there. 
You understand me? And you know, somebody that you know, it was God that asked Elijah to choose Elisha to replace him in his stead. You understand me? To take off his spirit, and he got a double portion of his spirit. I believe it was by the inspiration of God too that Elisha chose Gehazi, which means there was something that the Lord saw in both of them. That was why he connected them to this servant. So I see these two servants as people who have the call of God upon their life. I'm going to liken them to people or to women who have God's call upon their life. And they were connected to great men of God at different points in time. Now, why Elijah was looking out for the gift of God on the inside of Elijah. El Gehazi was with Elijah for gay. Now, the Bible says those who walk by the water will eat by the water. In the ministry, after a certain time, or you know, the Lord Almighty can make provision, can begin to touch the heart of people to get to give to you. At the beginning of the ministry, you understand me? So, at the, well, Sister Faith, I will do that at the end of the program. I will send you an inbox. God bless you, man. Amen. So, at the end of the day, you understand me now? Uh, uh, at the end of the day, by the time you're serving God in the ministry, a time will come that the Lord Almighty will begin to stir up people's hearts to bless you here and there. You understand me? So in ministry, there is a time and a season for everything. There is an appointed time for everything. When you want to begin to receive the gain without getting the anointing first, it is like putting the heart, you know, putting the, you know, the horse the the before the cat. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Or, you know, the other way around. I don't think, I don't know whether I got it right. You understand me? So there is a time for everything. Now, for Gehazi, Gehazi was not after the anointing first. It was after the gain from the anointing. And that is one of the reasons why people manifest before time. They want people to tell them what are the gain from the anointing. They want people to call them daddy, not me. They want people to celebrate them. You understand me? I was told of a man, you know, in this country who said, you know, he said it openly. He said it before people. He said he was waiting for God to call him. And when God did not call him, to his, call him into the ministry, he called himself. He went to open a church. He said, why? Because he wants people to respect him. You understand me? He was waiting for God to call him. God did not call him. He called himself. He was looking for the gain of the ministry. You understand me? Bible says, seek it first. Matthew 6, 33. Holy Spirit, help me this afternoon. It says, seek it first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added unto you. You understand me? So it is not about seeking the gain first. It is not about seeking the material things first. It is about seeking God's kingdom. And the reason why some launch out before the appointed time today is because their eyes is after the gain of the ministry. And that is the example of this Mr. Gehazi. You know, Elisha got a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Do you imagine? The Bible, the Bible recorded seven miracles that Elijah did. Elisha did 14. He was such a powerful man to the extent that even when he died, when they throw dead body on his, on his tomb, on where they buried him, the dead body, you know, raised up again. Even when he died physically, his spirit was so, so much alive. Even, you know, and he rose up. You understand me, man? God bless you real good. Everybody commenting. God bless you. Hallelujah. So, you know, he rose up. The, the dead man rose up, you know, on getting, touching the dead body of Elisha. Do you know why? Because the Gehazi that could have gotten a double portion of his spirit. You understand me? His eyes were set for the wrong thing. What should be the last thing was what he was after first. And that is what people always want. People that go out and go out and to manifest before the appointed time is because they put the last thing, they put it first. There are first thing first. When they are long, when you wait for the appointed time and you go out at the appointed time, every other thing will follow you. But those who manifest before time, they wanted, just like Moses, he wanted to be a deliverer. He wanted to settle the people. And that was the last thing that the Lord used him to do. You understand me? He had to repeat that class. The Bible says he ran, he fled. That training he did not get before. He went back to it. You understand me? That is God's mercy that made Moses to go back. A lot of men and women of God who launched out before time, they did not live to tell the story. They did not live to tell that story. Hallelujah. They did not live to tell the story because the devil finished them on the battleground. You understand me? The Bible says that even though the earth is prepared for the day of battle, victory still belongs to God. That you are launching out at the appointed time, ministry is not a job, it's not an easy thing. Ministry is hard work. Ministry is hard work. And that is why, you know, I don't understand why nobody will just wake up one day and you say you want to go and open a church. Or you want to, God has called you, want to be going, doing things all around. You understand me? You that you are called of God, we, we do, we know that God called you. 
You ask God for grace every day to sustain, to protect, to keep you. You keep yourself in the blood of just to do everything. Now to not talk on somebody that God has not sent. Or God has not said, go, yes. You understand me? You don't jump. When you jump out, you understand me? When you rush out, you rush him back. That is if you are allowed to tell the story. May we not be cut short in the mighty name of Jesus. Gehazi, he could have gotten a double portion of the Elisha's spirit. But that man, he went to the grave with the anointing. And the anointing was still so active. Even though his spirit has departed to God, his body, the anointing was still so much in the body that when they threw a dead man on his tongue, it's in the scripture. I didn't write it down, so I don't want to you know, begin to search that out. When they threw a dead man on his tongue, the dead man rose again. But what did our brother Gehazi got? What did he get at the end of the day? He got, he said in verse 27, 2 Kings 5, 7, 27, the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto their seed forever. When you go out, one another danger of launching out, manifesting before another, before appointed time is that, you know, you know, it, you, you know, you bring yourself under God, you know, under judgment. And this judgment sometimes does not stop with you. It extends to your children. The Bible says that a good man leaves a godly inheritance for his children. When you jump out and begin to go before the time, you begin to manifest before time, you can leave causes for your children that way. You can leave diseases for your children that way. You can leave, leave problems for your children that way. Hallelujah. Because when Gehazi got his own portion, <laughs> Elijah even sent it upon his children, upon his seed. Do you see how because of one man could not wait? He could did not wait. He could not wait. He did not understand timing. He did not understand that when you seek first the kingdom of God, when you get the things of the spirit first, every other thing will follow you. Sometimes people say, hey, all these men of God that are riding jets, what is your whole problem with them if they are riding jets? Were you there when they were eating? They were eating a bath. And they are using a bath to hit, you know, to, to hit Geisha. You understand me? I was listening to a man of God. One, he said, most of the things he has now, he did not buy them. But at the beginning of the ministry, it was not that. He sought the kingdom of God first. He, he came out at the appointed time. He did not jump the protocol. And now when all those things are following after, then why should we be bothered? I used to say it. I said, nobody sees me when I'm struggling and I'm going. He said, God, people take him on YouTube free and putting it. Go do this one free. I do it. Do that one free. I do it. Then the day the Lord decided not to bless me, then somebody will not begin to write on social media. God will put that in the hands of that person's hands. Hallelujah. I say it and I'm saying it with all seriousness. Because when you see God first, when you go at his appointed time, all other things will follow you. So therefore, anybody that said they want to jealous you, when after you have waited for God and God now decides to reward you, God will put finger in their hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Instead of Gehazi to get the right thing, he got the wrong thing. Elisha told him, he said, is it time to receive money? So in ministry, there are times that the Lord will tell you, go out first. Don't be about collecting money. Don't be about money. It is not about money yet. You are a music minister. You are a drama minister. You are a writer. And you are saying until you pay so, 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 so a month into my account. That is when I will, I will come. My dear sister, is, is, it, is it time to do that yet? Is it the right time to receive that first? Is it the appointed time? Do you know that some people appointed time has even come, it has gone. Why? Because they are, they are, they are focused on their own thing. And so people have forgotten them in the comments. That's another thing. Appointed time can be delayed. Or when it comes, you misuse the appointed time. So because everybody is saying, ah, God bless you. We love your son. We love your movie. We love your book. Then your shoulder begins to rise up. And begin to say, eh, eh, until you pay me this is your amount of money, I will not go. Anointing is not for sale. We are not selling anointing. My own anointing, it is not for sale. It does not have a price tag. A time will come. When the right time comes, you understand me? You won't tell people you don't need. Of course, some people say, but people, they don't know how to take care of minister. Leave them. It is them and God that will answer that one. But one thing I've known is that when you launch at the appointed time and you do the things at the right time, the Lord will back you up. And the Lord will make a name for himself in your life. So it is very dangerous for us to begin to do things out of the time. You know, out of the time that the Lord has shed you. For everything, there is a time and there is a season. Wait for the appointed time. Gehazi did not wait for the appointed time. He got leprosy. Not only did he get leprosy, he got, you know, his children, his, you know, his own seed, his own generation got leprosy. And the Bible may put you understand that a good man and a good woman leave good legacy for their children. 
So when you do wait for the appointed time, then you don't have a good legacy to, you know, to leave. And that is why today you see that, you know, there are generations of, you know, there are, there are a set of ministers that patience is not in their Bible at all. Nothing like patience. Everything God wants, everything God promised is now. My dear women, women of God that are watching me this afternoon, everything is not now, 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 now. Anything that you will eat, that you will last, that it will stay with you, involve a process. I came in and I was very hungry. I said, oh, before we, I start the program, because I, I was out on a farming, I said, I have to eat something. You understand me? But I know that if I begin to prepare something to eat now, it will take me another 45 minutes. And you people will be waiting online. Because of that, I took something little. And by the time I talk like 20 minutes, I'm already hungry again. You understand me now? That is the same thing with manifesting before time. Whatever you take in, you understand me, cannot last. It cannot sustain. When you manifest before time, you will not be sustained. You will not be sustained. In the book of 1 Kings, let's read 1 Kings as I begin to round up. 1 Kings. Hallelujah. Is the Lord speaking to someone today? 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. I read from verse 5. And as he lay and slept under a jumper tree, Behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coast, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose, and he did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat, forty days and forty nights, into the oil of the mountain of God. When you wait for the appointed time, you understand me? You are sustained. You go in the strength of God. But when you jump out before time, you understand me? You are not sustained because what you are eating is just for that moment only. So, you know, and one thing with ministry is that when somebody comes out, because when I was growing up, let me share this with you. When I was a little girl, the Lord opened my eyes because I can't say it was my understanding at that time that gave me. The Lord opened my eyes to, re, you know, to observe some things. I realized that, you know, when they say, you know, talking secularly now, that when a musician comes out, you understand me? They'll say, ah, hit song. Guru, 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 guru. That song will rock, will rain, will maybe they sell millions and everything like that. After that particular song, you might not hear of that person again forever. So I begin to wonder. I said, God, why is it that they start, they just have guru and they just end? You understand me? And I came to the understanding that some star come out before the appointed time. Some went to Dog I don't know how to put it in. They went to patch it up. Let me say their guy. They went to patch it up. And you know that one, 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 one truth now, that even in the work of God now, even in ministry work now, a lot of people are patching it up. They are patching it up. They are adding from the devil because it is not God who sent them. Because if they, when it is the Lord that sent, he will back you up. Because they want to shine on time. They want their church to be full on time. They want their movies to sell on time. Then they begin to take, you understand me? You know, they begin to take special oil. Special prepared oil. Do you know where they bring that oil from? Do you know where they bring that water from? Do you know where they bring that thing from? And they begin to drink it and swallow it and begin to do things. Why? Because they want to manifest. They want it to be now. Anything that you will eat and it will, it will, it will take and it will last long. Go straight process. If I want to eat rice now, say for example, there is a process. I have to wait for the rice. If I want to enjoy that rice, I don't want to have problem in my tummy. I must wait for it to be done, to be well done. Soft, eatable, easily digestible. That is when I can eat and it can sustain me for a long time. But in a process where I'm in such a hurry, I want to eat and that is why the rice is there and I'm beginning to put it in my mouth. I'm not waiting for it to be done. Number one is that I will have blisters in my mouth. And that is what many ministers have today. Many ministers are already having blisters because they have hurt before time. They have put their last thing forth. They have jumped out, you know, before time. It is not everybody that will go and open a ministry. It's not everybody that will go and open a church. Woman of God, yes, you, it, you don't need a title to function. It is not everybody that will go and start a church. And even if you are going to start church, is it now? Where does the Lord want you to do it? Do you understand me? Moses was to lead the children of Israel. But was that the way the Lord wanted him to do it? Was that the pattern that the Lord wanted him to do it? 
If you now go to, let's go to Exodus back now. Exodus chapter 3. The Bible says he fled. He fled. And when he fled, you know, to, 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 um, to Midian, he fled there, he was there. If you read it from verse 16 of Exodus chapter 2, you see the process. The Bible says he went there. He went to the priest. You saw a priest of Midian. That priest had seven daughters. And you know, Moses came down and began to help the man. You understand me? He went back to do what? He served his father, you know. Hallelujah. I think the Lord wants me to, to talk about this. I wanted to talk about this another time. He served his father, you know. The reason why some appointed time have not come is because the Lord wants you to go through service. And when you jump that service and you stand out, you understand me, you begin to flee, you begin to run around. And that's why you see some people, they will operate as a minister with this ministry today. Tomorrow, pa, they will go to another place. Another time, they will go to another time. Going around with strange ability because of what? They have not learned the principle of patience and waiting on the Lord. Moses did not wait until God called him. God, have you, have, did you, maybe I did not see. Or did you read it in chapter 2? The only thing I read was that he was born. The next thing was trying to be the prince and the judge of the people. Did God call him to be that? Has God called him at that time? That you have, you have that revelation. You understand me? That you are, they told you that you are going to be a minister. Does not automatically make you a minister. Here is called. Be sure that this is God calling you. You understand me? And that was what uh, Moses did not learn before. And he learned it the hard way. How did I know that he learned it the hard way? He went back. The Bible says as he got to meet and he ran. A whole prince. He could not stay in Egypt again. Why? Because he has manifested before time. He has gone to show that he, ha he is a leader. He has power. He has passion for the Hebrew before time. You understand? The Bible says the soul that killed him shall, you know, he, you know, shall die. So Pharaoh wanted to kill Moses. Why? Because Moses manifested before time. A whole prince that was there in the, in the palace, eating. He could not stay there again. When you manifest before time, you lose peace. You lose peace and you lose touch with heaven. When you manifest before appointed time, then you'll be on the run, moving around, running and looking for solution here and there. Do you understand me? Because what you're not supposed to do, you went out to do it first. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that in verse 17, and the shepherds came, I'm reading Exodus 2, and but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. You see now, hallelujah. He now went to enroll well, in the ministry of hell. The ministry of hell that Moses was supposed to do before. You understand me? What he was supposed to have learned before. He now began to help now. That the Lord has placed you as an assistant minister. You are a female minister in that church. And you are helping your mommy in the Lord. You are helping your geo's wife and everything like that. It is not a mistake. Sad well. Sad well. You understand me? Service is one of the things that lift one up and that sets one on high. He had to go back. A whole prince. He had to learn how to serve. He began to serve his father-in-law there. He began to work. Before he even became the father-in-law, began to water their rock, their flock. And when they came to the father, the Bible says, the, the man asked them, ah, how did you people, you know, come on time? And he said, ah, there was an Egyptian that came to help us. You understand me? And as a result of that, what he should have put first, he put, you understand me? <laughs> he put, you know, he now put, you know, what he should have put first, he made it last. And what should not be last was not the first thing that he did. So he had to reorder himself. When you manifest before time, you understand me? You lose direction, you lose focus. Hallelujah. Thank God for the grace of God that brought Moses back. Thank God for the grace of God that brought Moses back. But many did not lead to, you know, to speak, you know, to tell the story today. Imagine if Pharaoh had found him. You know, he escaped death as a little child. And the same death he escaped, that was what the Pharaoh was not looking to kill him now. So instead of all running here and there, woman of God, let's go back to God. You have done that program. You have organized program that God did not send you. You have done things as a result of that. So from the program you have received as that, you cannot walk very well with your leg again. You cannot move around with your hand again. You cannot turn your head again. You cannot, your whole body is on fire. Why are you trying to do what God has not asked you to do? My dear woman of God, it's time to return back to God. It's time to return back to God. It is not everybody that will start a ministry, that will start a church. You understand me? It is not by the title. 
Maybe what the Lord wants you to do first is the health ministry. I think I've talked about it in this program before. You know, that your ministry can just be a health ministry. You don't need to have a podium before you are a woman in ministry. Hallelujah. And he went back. He began to serve. Now, the Bible says that in verse 23, it was in that place where he was serving that in the process of that time, the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel signed by reason of the bondage and they cried. And their cry came unto God by the reason of the bondage. Now, this was the appointed time that the Lord wanted to deliver the children of Israel because their body was now increased. As at that time, it was not yet time. So in God's agenda, God is a God of time and season. Bible says, at the appointed time, in the fullness of time, there is a due date and there is a due time for everything. The Bible says, and God look upon the children of Israel and God had compassion on them. And now, that is now when the time now came for Moses. In verse chapter 3, the Bible says, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. He was now there. Prince of Egypt cannot return home again. You understand me? Shame has made some people to live where they are because they went to open that ministry. They went to open that church when the Lord did not send them. Now the church has closed up. They cannot even go again. Some have relocated from their country. Some have relocated from the place. But woman of God, I'm not despising you. Neither am I making jest of you. If that is the situation, your situation as you are watching me right now, I'm encouraging you, go back to God. Go back to God. Go and join another church. Don't just sit down at home. Go and serve. Go and serve. The way up is the is true service. Go and serve. You understand me? You know, the, the, you know, go and serve. Go and be under somebody. Go and learn that. Because in the first instance, you are not supposed to go and start out. Some people want to start their own church because they are not ready to listen to their pastor anymore. How old is he? How old is she? You understand me? Go back and learn. And do you know something? The Lord Almighty will restore you in the fullness of time. You will not break out from that church. In fact, this time around when you are now living, you'll be living honorably. When the appointed time comes, in fact, it is the man of God, the Lord will minister and say it is time. You yourself, you will know that the time has come. Even when the Lord says it is time, and the people you are serving on that say, don't go yet. My dear woman of God, don't go yet. The heart of the king is in God's hand. Be patient. You understand me? That man of God that the Lord has led you to, you understand me? He, you know, he, he, he is hearing from God. If it is time, ask that the Lord will minister to them. Let all things be done orderly and decently so that you can last in ministry. Hallelujah. The Bible says when the time came, even when God appeared to Moses and began to speak to him, you understand me? The Bible says, hey, he, he, by the time God now said, go and lead my people, the Moses now begin to give excuse. I'm a stammerer. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. I'm sure that part of the thing was fear. The fear of failure before. When you manifest before time to fail. When you manifest before your appointed time, it can lead to failure. Lead to failure. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, and but by the time the Lord finished the process, by the Lord, the Lord finished the process, who was not this man that led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt? It was the same Moses. So what I'm saying today is that even though you have jumped out before, even though there are complications and trouble, my dear woman of God, go back to God today. Go back to God. If he's telling you to go and join a church or to go and begin to serve under somebody's ministry, go and serve there genuinely. Don't go and serve there because I've been looking for a way to bring out members to go and form your home group. You understand me? When you are following a man or a woman of God, follow with the right motive. Follow with genuity. Follow with the act to serve. Elisha followed Elijah, you know, with a, with a pure motive. That was why he was able to get the double portion of the spirit. And that was why he did not see any fault in the land of Elisha, Elijah. Do you think Elijah did not have fault? Elijah. Elijah that is always calling that fire, fire. Prophet fire, fire. But Elisha did not see that. He did not see the fault in the life of Elijah. His eyes was focused. His eyes were set on the spirit that Elijah, you know, carried. And the Bible says it's certain. To the extent that people said, is, is it not Elisha, the one that poured water on the hand of Elijah? Many of us women, we cannot serve. Learn to serve. Learn to serve. There's no anointing that you have. You understand me? That will not make you to serve. You understand me? We should learn to serve. Bible says submitting one to another. Don't be so arrogant and so rude. That the Lord has made that person to go ahead of you. You understand me in ministry? It is because, you know, 
The Lord wants you to learn one or two things from them. Don't say, it doesn't matter how many years of ministry. Learn to serve, serve genuinely. When you are drawing closer to a woman of God, go with the right motive. Don't go and be, and, be, and, and you go to, 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 you know, to somebody, to a woman of God or to a man of God because you want to go and see the things in their life. You want to go and see the thoughts in their life. That was what Gehazi was seeing. Gehazi was not seeing the spirit of God upon Elisha. If Gehazi saw the spirit of God, he would not go after all those things. When the man of God said no, he doesn't want, then he said it in his heart. He said, this, this pastor is a, is a fool. This man of God is a fool. Me, I will go after them and collect it. You understand me? In ministry, there is a time for everything. Learn service. Learn to serve. It's not every time they give you a gift that you collect. It's not every gift that they give to you that you must use. You must be sensitive. You know, to understand the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that is why we see so many people jump out and go and start ministry today. You see no training, no, no knowledge, nothing, nothing, no anointing, no respect. You understand me? And these are the same set of people that will be in their ministry. You want everybody to submit to you. You see, whatever you sow, you will reap. So we should learn, you know, learn to submit. Learn service. Learn to serve with people. I was telling someone, I said, as a drama minister, it is not every time I go to location that I go to appear before the film. I'm a president of a ministry, but I have gone to film location that I stood behind the camera cooking, cooking. You're not, not Europe cooking. No. In Nigeria, you know the typical cooking. That the only thing I went to handle was to cook. You understand me? It is lingering my service. You understand me? When you, when you bring yourself down, God will lift you up. When your appointed time comes, you will last. You will shine well. You will shine long. Go and learn how to serve. You understand me? When the Lord connects you to a woman of God or a man of God, there is a reason why the connection. Maybe the gift, maybe you have a calling, but it is not your coming up. God put you there to go and learn first. And the way to learn is by service. You are respecting the grace of God upon their life. You are respecting what they carry. You understand me? And when you respect, don't respect with the mouth only. Don't just say, yes, ma, yes, ma. And that yes, man is not reaching your heart. You see, this God we are dealing with, he knows your heart. I read a post on Facebook yesterday. Let me share with you. In fact, I read the post. I copied it. I showed my husband. There was this brother. He wrote his true life story on Facebook. He said there was a man of God that he was under. Do you understand me? That they were having fellowship together and everything like that. And he felt that this man of God, he cannot speak, he cannot speak good English. So whenever the man of God is preaching in the front, the brother will be gathering people up. And he will be bringing out the error in the message of the man of God. The man of God didn't talk to him, did not confront him, did not do everything and everything like that. So he began to have his own tackles. Do you understand me? And that is the mistake many people make. You go close to a woman of God and you are out there to see the mistakes and everything. If your eyes is what you, your eyes sees that you will get. Elijah, Elijah was focused. When he was following Elijah, when Elijah was to depart, and all the children, all the sons of prophets, all the other pastors, Elijah saw what they did not see. Supposing those one have recognized that Elijah is an uncommon prophet. Don't you know that Elijah will have blessed all of them? Or did you read it in the scripture? Hallelujah. Did you read it in the scripture that those uh, sons of prophets, they asked that, ah, hey, uh, uh, man of God, pray for us. You understand me? Some women are so arrogant and so proud. You say, what does she carry? What you cannot see, you cannot receive. They did not ask for the anointing. But only Elisha set his eyes and he was following. He was focused. That even when the chariot of fire came, he said, my father, my father. You know, he called Elisha. Elijah his father. Bible scholar make us to understand that Elisha was older than Elijah. So the reason why some people cannot serve under other people because we think you are older than them. What is age? It is not by age. And so he said, what does she have that I don't have? If you organize program, it's our organized program. Did the Lord send you? It is, it is the one that the Lord sent that will back up. And we have talked about the dangers of manifesting before time. You can be hit. You can be killed. Anything can happen. You can be disgraced out of the whole place. Just like uh, uh, um, uh, our brother, you know, Gehazi was disgraced. He was disgraced. Is it not disgraceful? You know, when you have leprosy in Israel, that time you don't stay among the people. They put them in the bush. He, because he did not wait for the appointed time. He was relocated into darkness. He was relocated among the, you know, away from the people. Shem will not even allow him to go out again. Who will talk to a man that is full of leprosy? So this story I was talking about, the brother, he was despising the man of God. He was saying, ah, the man can't even speak proper English. You know, there are some people like that. 
when they come for your program or they are reading your post, they will be looking out for the error. You understand me? You'll be looking for heroes. Those who are seeing anointing are getting anointing. Hallelujah. He was looking for the heroes in the man of God's life and everything like that. Until the Lord broke him down. At a time, the man of God now traveled. He did so many things. He said they went to pray for somebody on the mountain one day. He started casting out demons, started binding the devil. In fact, the devil wanted to slap them at a the time. The girl was manifesting. He said, this man, this illiterate man that he said does not know anything, just came and he just looked. In just one word, he said, if I said the man has not even stopped. When the lady that was possessed, that they were conducting deliverance for, became calm. In fact, he said the lady wanted to run away. Why? Because if the demons recognize, they know their home. They know those who are in their camp and they know the genuine ones. They know the genuine one. God bless us real good in Jesus' name. Everybody coming online. God bless you, man. God bless you. Appreciate. He said, this man of God, this man that he has been ridiculing behind his back. And you know, there are many people like that. When they see you, they'll be smiling. God bless you, woman of God. I evangelist, ma. You are lifted, ma. You are blessed, ma. Our mommy, oh, and everything. And by the time you turn your back, they begin to abuse you. You, you don't fight with such people. You don't even say anything. You understand me? The what you carry, they can't get it. Where they will be is the back. The barbiters will always be at the back. So he said, immediately the man came there. And the demon possessed lady saw the man. She wanted to run away. He said, under two minutes, the demon left the lady. And they have been sweating and cutting and biting. He said, he did not learn his lesson that day. He said, now, the man of God wanted to travel. He now left him in charge of the fellowship of the church. He said, one by one, people stopped coming. People stopped coming. People stopped coming. Everybody stopped coming until he was left with two people. You understand me? He said, at first, he said, <laughs> you understand me? Ah, ma, that's, that's what they do. Our mommy, evangelist, pastor, ma, mommy, pastor, it's a lie. That is why you'll be praying for some people from now till tomorrow. You are joining and the death. You are helping them to believe God for something. They will not receive. Why would they receive it? Because they are despising God in your life. So the anointing that you despise cannot work for you. He said, people left the fellowship, only two people. This brother was now, you know, was now, you know, he was now broken. He now went to be the man of God. He said, oh, people are no longer coming. And the man looked at him. He said, they can't follow you because you are not following me. You are not submissive. Yeah, the word hits me. So the man knew along, when you are following a genuine servant of God, and you are doing things to that person at the back, you think he will not know. Uh, Elisha said, did my eyes not go with you? Did my eyes not go with you when you are going to collect that thing? I say something, I say, you can come around me if you are fake. No problem. But you can't stay for long. In a little time, because the Lord is with you, the Lord will reveal. And I thank God for that grace. The Lord will reveal. And the Lord will let me know that this is who you are. I will tell you how to deal with such a person. So the anointing that you despise, it cannot speak for you. You can't benefit from it. That is why you see some people, they have been in the ministry for many years, yet nothing, nothing good has come out of their life. Because what? They are just in that ministry, they are not following. Their spirit is not connecting. They are not serving. You understand me? You see what we tell my service today is not really service. It's not service in code. So people can come for all these services, yet their mind is not with you. Yet they are not there with you. Yet as something is happening in your church today, they will carry it and go and tell another person. Those one will go and write it on social media. Hallelujah. Elisha said to Nama, he said, didn't my eyes go with you? My eyes saw you. So when the Lord brings you, go and learn new service. That's why I said, don't do eye service. Don't do eye service. You abuse me at my back, then you come on my page and be writing things. That is high service. You understand? You cannot benefit anything. That kind of anointing, you can't receive anything from me. He cannot speak from you. Let's learn service. So that when the appointed time comes, we will serve well, we will shine well, we will shine, you know, we will shine brighter in the mighty name of God. Thank you, everybody that is that is commenting, man. God bless you, good. Please don't mind me. I do not mention any names. Please oh, forgive me. The Lord bless us real good in Jesus. I appreciate you for all your comments and for sharing the video. So therefore, it is very, very important for us to know this. I'll close with this scripture. I think I wrote a scripture down. I'll close with this scripture. I believe the Lord has spoken to someone today. Amen. I believe the Lord has spoken to someone today. Titus. Let me read from my okay. Let me read from my multiple 
version here so that we can uh, get different translations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me read from the versions here so that we can get different translation into it. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Forgive me, please. I'm trying to open it on my Bible here. This is the this is the last scripture I want to read. I want to bring out different translation. One verse three, Titus chapter one verse three. I want to bring it. There is a way. I, there is a place I always get out the translation altogether. Okay, the Bible says, Titus one three. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, sorry, I was busy battling with my with uh, reading from different translation. Now, Titus one series. It says. In New Living Translation, say, and now at just the right time, he has revealed this message, which we announce to everyone. It is by the command of our God, our Savior, that have been entrusted with this work for him. In another translation, in Berean Study Bible, it says, excuse me, in his own time, he has revealed his message in the proclamation entrusted to me by the command of our God, our Savior. Hallelujah. In King James, he says, but as in due time, in what? In, the, in, 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 you know, in his time, in the proper time, in the due time, manifested his work through preaching. So there is an appointed time for manifesting. Everything that the Lord Almighty has said to you, I'm going to use you to preach the gospel all over, it will come to pass in the right time, at the appointed time. Wait for the appointed time. When you see that the Lord, some of God is using somebody in the area he has spoken to you about, my dear sister, my dear woman of God, don't be afraid. You understand me? Don't be envious. In fact, begin to pray for that person because your own time will come. And when your time comes, you will shine well, you will shine long, and you will shine forever in the mighty name of Jesus. In another, time, in another one, it says, and at the right time, in good news translation, he reveal it in his message. Another one says in his time, at the right time, you know, like that. He has revealed to us at the appointed time. So there is an appointed time to manifest. There's an appointed time to shine forth. There is a proper time to shine forth. There is a proper time, you know, to launch out. And when that appointed time comes, everything around you, how will you know that the appointed time has come? Everything around you will show that the time has come. You know, I told us about the story that the Lord said I should not shoot movie. I should wait. I'm trying to run up, but the word is just coming. That I should not, I should wait. I went to Nigeria second so far. When the appointed time came, the appointed time came in 20, 2005. That was between, between 1996 and 2005 was nine years. But in those nine years that the ministry has started, I was doing other things. I was reaching out to Nigerian secondary school. I was doing many things, other things for the Lord. In fact, I was focused mainly on that Nigerian secondary school. When the appointed time came, the Lord made everything to happen, even though the devil tried to stop it, but the Lord made it possible. And that movie became a reference point in my life. Became a reference point, you know, it changed my story. When the appointed time came, that year, you understand me? Those who have never called me to feature in any other movie before, called me for, I featured in other people's movie before I even featured in my own movie. So let me say, I'm receiving it for my home, I'm receiving it. Sir, serve God, serve true others, submit yourself. You understand me? To so God, look at the story I told us a very, very powerful story. I, I said, I'm going to share it on my page. Sir. You understand me? When you think you are following a man and a woman of God and you are backbiting them, you are pulling them back at their back and everything like that, and you think they don't know, the anointing will not speak for you. It will not work for you. And that's why I told my husband, I said, this this one has to be praying before you pray for people. Because people who have been speaking against anointing and then you begin to waste your time to pray for them. The, there is a person that the Lord has assigned for you, the one that the Lord has assigned for you, you have not been paying attention. You understand me? So my dear sisters, my dear women of God, the appointed time will come. And for someone listening to me this afternoon, you know, this is a word, of, a word from the Lord to you. You have been serving others. You have served. The Lord said, your time has come. And your time has come. How will you know the time will come? He will make everything to work for your good. You will not struggle. When the appointed time comes, you don't struggle. When appointed time comes, you know, you don't struggle. There's no struggle in it. 
There's no struggle because he make it beautiful. He make it wonderful because the time has come. And the time that the Lord has apportioned will manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. And the time that the Lord has apportioned will manifest. Now is the time in the mighty name of Jesus. For someone watching me this afternoon, now is the time. For another person, the Lord is saying, go back. Go back and serve. Go back and serve. It was after Moses went back and served. That was why he, la he lasted and he stayed in the ministry. Let's just begin to bless the name of the Lord. If the Lord has spoken to you this afternoon, magnify his holy name, praise his holy name, worship him, give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration, praise his name. Father, we we'll bless your name. Thank you for your word that you sent to us this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for your encouragement. Thank you, Lord, because it is, it is time. And Lord, you have brought forth your word to us. We exalt your name. We magnify your name. Be thou exalted, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray. Have you here today as you are watching me? You have rushed out before time. I want to begin to pray and say, Father, grace to retrace my step back to you, O God. Moses retraced back his step. He retraced back his, back his step and he was restored and he still fulfilled purpose. In the case of Gehazi, you know, it did not even occur to him to even plead to plead for mercy. The Bible says he left Elisha's presence already white. The, the leprosy covered him already. Father, I want us to pray. I say, Father, in any way I've missed it, Father, Lord, Lord, put me back on track. Put me back on track. Have I gone out before my time? Lord, put me back on track. Father, Lord, I pray for as many that are watching today, that will watch later, who have missed the time or who have gone out before time. Lord Almighty, oh God, Lord, that your grace and your mercy will restore back, oh God, Lord, today in the name of Jesus. That because, oh God, Lord, we know that there are dangers in manifesting before the appointed time. Lord, we will restore back, oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We give them, oh God, Lord, a repentant heart in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray for a heart of a servant. There's no level you get to in ministry that you want, that you can't still serve. Anywhere you have, you understand me, you can still serve. I want us to pray that the Lord will give us a servant heart. To keep, because the way to go up and up and up and up is to serve. Jesus served his disciples. He washed their feet. He did everything, you know, you know, and he brought himself down before them, you know, to, to, you know, to in order to pass that across the message. That he do it, the one that shall be the leader, you know, must learn to serve. I want us to pray. Father, receive grace, oh God, Lord. Lord, to serve. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, I will not at any time think, oh, yeah, I have a right in the name of Jesus. And Lord, oh God, Lord, you that we understand that with every service brings promotion in the name of Jesus. And I want us to pray and say, Father, may I not miss my appointed time. May I not miss my appointed time, that the time that you have for me, may I not miss it, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. The time that you have a portion for me, may I not miss my appointed time. May I not be early, may I not be late, in the name of Jesus. Let's now pray for women in ministry conference. Can I crave your indulgence, please? Join me, it's exactly 29 days. By this time next month, we'll be out, I'll just have a few hours to round up the program. I want us to pray and ask that the Lord Almighty, that for the women in ministry in Spain, I'm speaking live from you to your Spain and say, Father, glorify yourself in the Women in Ministry Conference. All that you have in mind for us that we shall receive during this conference in the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, Lord. All that you have in mind for us, oh God, Lord, that the Women in Ministry Conference 2018 with the team vessels of grace. So, oh God, Lord, and Lord, oh God, Lord, it shall be made manifest in the name of Jesus that you shall impart us. That by this time, next month, just a few hours to end. Lord, our heart will be filled and be full of gratitude to you in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that as many as the Lord has ordained will be at this program in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody that is here to make up their mind that the Lord will make provision. The Lord will provide for individuals. The Lord will make provision. The Lord is gathering nations. People, you know, yesterday night I uploaded the, something on my Facebook page. People are coming from different countries, bought their tickets. Even from within spring here, that the Lord will make grace available for us to begin. And by eventually you are watching me, you have not yet made up your mind. My dear woman of God, it is not too late. Iron sharpened iron. One of the ways by which we can grow and get to understand this timing and to shine and to shine when to shine when is by attending this kind of program. Let's pray that the power of God will be made manifest and everyone that the Lord has proposed will be there. There will be provision. There shall be no delay. There shall be no hindrance in the name of your Father. Everyone that you are proposed to be at the conference, oh God, Lord, you make grace available, oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, everybody having one issue or the other in coming, Lord Almighty, you set to every issue, financial, logistic issues, oh God, my family issue. Lord, you will set to them and Lord, you will bring them, oh God, Lord, in the name of God. As many that are registered, oh Lord, you will bring them as both. I will still register. Lord, you will bring from far and yet 
to the glory and honor of your name, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, God, Lord, that Lord Almighty, every speaker, let's pray for all the ministers of the ministry, either as our main, our main speaker, uh, Mommy Olohu, and all the other one of, that will be joining to handle one thing or the other, that the power of God will envelop us. In the name of Jesus, Father, let your power envelop us. Let your grace remain multiplied in our lives, O oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Increase us, O oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and prepare us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, for this program, Lord, prepare everyone that we want to use, even to minister. Let's pray that every woman of God have been coming, that the Lord will give each and every one of us a teachable heart. Nobody will come there and begin to sample messages. You know, whether you are the head of ministry or president, that the Lord Almighty will give everyone a teachable heart. In the name of Jesus, everyone that be at this program, Lord, in the name of Jesus, every woman of God, whether head of ministry, Lord, you will give every one of us a teachable heart. That your word will sink in our heart. Your word will transform our life and will not remain the same again. Thank you, most wonderful Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for grace. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you, Lord, the great God you have spoken to us. That we will pray for the grace to apply your word to our lives. In the name of Jesus, as many who have drunk out before time, Lord, I pray you will release grace, O oh God, Lord, to retrace their steps in the mighty name of Jesus. And your name alone, O oh God, Lord, will be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Father, may we never miss our appointed time. In the name of Jesus, for the conference, let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, most wonderful Father. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen and amen. I say amen to all your prayers. Thank you so much for your comments and everything. Lord, Lord bless us. We good in Jesus' name. Don't forget, next month is just 29 days more now. Amen, amen, amen. If you are watching me, you are in Spain, you are in France, Italy, Sweden. In fact, we have participants coming from US and Canada at this program this year. Anywhere you are, you know, make sure you are part of this conference. Like I said, the registration link will be put up. Like I said, the registration is free. If you want to stay alone in the room, in the hotel room, you can indicate there, you can stay alone. If you want to share the room with somebody, you can share it as well. The Lord bless us real good in Jesus' name. Thank you, my sweetheart, for helping us to post the link. Register. The registration is very important because we have some package of gifts that we have prepared. You understand me? The registration is not only maybe, even if you are living inside Spain, please register. And the registration is for, um, uh, to, for us to know how many people are coming and there are gifts that we are prepared, you know, to give to people. So if we are going to prepare the gifts based on registration, based on those who registered online. So please try to register online and register and we'll be praying along with you. If you are coming from other country, please let us know your arrival time. And if you register for the conference, and you did not receive a message that said we'll get back to you. It shows you your registration has not been submitted. Because somebody told me this one, he said I registered, but I didn't see the registration. Make sure you get a confirmation that your registration has been confirmed, you know, so that we can be there and we can be blessed as well. Thank you so much for connecting this afternoon. Next week is another time by the grace of God. Please, I need your prayers. Pray along with us concerning the program. And I want to appreciate everybody that connected and shared this afternoon. The Lord bless us real good in Jesus' name. More grace, more oil, more favor, more lifting in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall not miss our appointed time and we are preserved. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you, women of God. Bye for now.